Hello, in this video we will talk about visual enhancement. We will go through the following topics. We will explain what visual enhancement means. We will take a look at the difference between light visual enhancement and heavy visual enhancement. We will check how to keep client's information in the slide, how to use inspiration feature at our platform. And we will also go through most common mistakes in visual enhancement our designers sometimes do. So let's start with visual enhancement. Visual enhancement means a creative effort. That means that we are improving structure. We might be adding logos or flags instead of company names or country names. We might be restructuring bullet points, turning numbers into visual flows, changing or editing pictures to more relevant or higher quality ones, recreating pictures into PowerPoint elements. I suggest to always confirm this with admin. We are using colors to highlight key points, adding visual elements, converting simple charts or data into infographics, adding maps, adding icons, or adding backgrounds if suitable. This all includes following guidelines, client style, and ensuring alignment and consistency across, so all of our usual quality standards have to be followed while visually enhancing the slide. Here we have a small example. So this is our input slide. If we would just brush up the slide, we are focusing more on alignment, even distribution, and making sure that guidelines are followed. When we are visually enhancing the slide, you can see that we have applied more creative approach. Therefore, structure has been changed and improved and icons have been added. Here is more real case example. So at the top, again, we have input years and uh, content uh, connected to them. In the brush app, you can see again, just alignments, uh, fitting to slide frame, consistency, and following guidelines. In visual enhancement, we have changed structure to the timeline we have added icons and again made sure all our quality standards are applied. So now what is the difference between light visual enhancement and heavy visual enhancement? When we are talking about light visual enhancement, we mean that structures should be not overly creative. We might be keeping closer structure to input slide. And a good example of this is brush up with addition of icons. Please note, Applying only light visual enhancement has to be stated in project description or instructions. Otherwise, you have to, have to apply regular enhancement that requires proper creative effort. Now, heavy visual enhancement means very creative structures and solutions, and the result is usually very different from the input. We might use this term when we want to reinforce that slides needs to be really creative, and you maybe need to go a bit more out of the box to really bring creative results. Here we have a small example. So uh, we have input with basically three sentences and then we have light visual enhancement on the left. You can see it's basically brushed up with addition of icons and heavy visual enhancement have more creative structure, uh, adding of more uh, graphical elements than just icons. And uh, yeah, this would be considered like normal to heavy visual enhancement, but the creative effort is much bigger than in the light visual enhancement example. Now, let's see how to keep clients' information in the slide. Especially when we are visually enhancing the slide, we are changing to the different improved structure, we are dividing the content. Therefore, we have to make sure that no information goes missing or is generally message gets lost into in the slide. Because even the most beautiful slide does not have any value for our client if we lost the content or message of the slide. So how can we lose clients' information? There are two ways. So first one would be deleting or changing the content. And second way would be restructuring and reorganizing content in the way that does not support the actual message of the slide and eventually misleads to different understanding of the slide. Now let's take a look at how to keep clients information in the slide. So you need to understand the content, therefore you need to read the content. Only then you know how to divide the content and what structure to choose for the slide. When you are dividing the content, you have to do it correctly when splitting text to separate bullet points or boxes. You can't delete any text, but of course you can add, for example, numbering. You also need to keep correct hierarchy and order of elements. You can't just randomly misplace the elements at the slide. You also should support main message of the slide by choice of correct structure and solution for enhancement. And you should try to bring focus on important points. At the end, always proper content check, including the content checker tool, must be applied. Now, let's take a look at how to use our inspiration feature from platform. So you can find this tool by clicking on this icon 
And this tool, this feature contains uh, different categories, as you can see in here, from different template layout, bullet point structures, timelines to shapes, uh, different enhanced shapes and similar. And you can use this either just for your inspiration or you can also download these slides and use these structures for your tasks. But there are certain things you need to think about when you are using these slides. So when you are choosing your structure and converting it to client's template and style, you should think about this. So first of all, you need to really understand and read the content of input because visuals needs to support the message of the slide. So you need to understand the slide to be able to choose some structure from inspiration feature. When you know what the slide is about, then you can choose the correct category that fits your slide. So either timeline, steps, process, or similar. Then you can copy the structure to client's template. You'll need to, of course, fit it to the slide frame and adjust the, st the structure if needed. So sometimes you might uh, find some structure that perfectly fits the slide, but maybe there is some box missing or so. So you might need to just add another level or another bullet or something. So this slide, of course, needs to be worked with still. Then you should always make sure that your structure will be then compliant with client's guidelines and style. So if the slide from inspiration feature is boxy, but our client style is very light and non-filled, then all of that needs to be adjusted to the client style. And lastly, you need to update the icons to the client style. And of course, based on the meaning of the text that is in the slides. Now we will go to take a look at small example of how I would turn this slide into some structure from inspiration feature. So since I understand this slide that these are certain steps or certain uh, steps in the process of how to choose and convert the slide and make it successful, I can choose from these categories, either steps or processes. So I decided to use this structure because it has five points. Also, my slide has uh, five points of what needs to be applied when you are choosing the slide from inspiration feature. And here is downloaded slide from the inspiration feature. Now, what I need to do is to copy the structure and bring it to my client's template, which in my case, it's this one. I can just paste it in here and I can see that when I paste it, to this new template, the colors got adjusted. So in this case, it doesn't look very good. So I can either just adjust them right away, or I can also keep the original colors and then just make sure that I adjust all the fonts and colors somewhere in the process. I will delete these icons for now because they anyway need to be exchanged. And now I will group this whole figure and I will adjust it to the slide frame. Since this structure does not have any heading, but my slide has, I need to keep some space for the heading. And as you can see, now these two sides are adjusted to the slide frame, but this side is still not. So what you should not do is just uh, basically resize the structure like this. In this case, it might work if you ungroup it and if you will change the size of all the circles to not be distorted uh, or like proportions are off. As you know, all the circles needs to have same height and width. So you can go ahead and adjust it, maybe then adjust uh, the arrow and then it would be fine. Or another thing you can do is to press, press shift while you are resizing the object to keep the proportions. So now I'm holding shift. And now, as you can see, when I'm resizing, the proportions stay the same. So then I can just adjust slide frame now I can ungroup my figure. I can unselect the circles, group everything else and adjust the figure. And now I can just move the circles to the position that I want to. Again, this arrow would need some adjustment and so on. Of course, here my job would not end. I need to change the font, the colors, make sure everything is guideline compliant, such as text box margins and, and so on. So this would eventually be my result, but there is one important thing and those are animations. Since my input had applied animations, also my output needs to apply them. Therefore, you can see that this would be the final result with animations applied pretty much the same as the input. As a last point, we will take a look at most common mistakes in visual enhancement. 
So first one is over usage of icons or icons not fitting the meaning of the content or icons in wrong position. So right side of the text is not correct position. Icons have to lead the text, therefore be left of the text. Also thinking that adding only icons updates brush up to visual enhancement is not correct. This can be used only in live visual enhancement, but for regular enhancement, more creative approach needs to be applied. Also, another mistake is over usage of additional lines and shapes uh, to the extent where it becomes like too heavy, too chaotic, and adds too much complexity to the slide. That's also not good. Another point, making structure too complex and hard to understand. You should be able to enhance the slide, but still keep it easy to understand and read. Another mistake on the opposite hand is when slide remains almost the same as input. So there is certain inability to interpret the meaning of the slide and ending up kind of just stuck with the original structure. So we should be able to really elevate the slide, improve the structure and bring some different takes on the visual. Also, it is not good when we choose some unsuitable structure for the slide. So really think about what slide is saying, if it's some timeline, if it's some process or similar, and try to apply the structure that really fits that meaning. Also, we have to make sure that we are supporting the message of the slide. So sometimes we can see that overall visual is really not supporting the message. Uh, maybe also wrong elements are highlighted and so on. So please be careful about this. And the last point is that sometimes enhancement is not suitable for client style. So maybe enhancement is based on two boxes style for a client with no filled boxes, or maybe enhancement uses too many organic shapes, such as round edges, circles, for a client that prefers very boxy edgy style. Here we have just a small example of some wrong style for enhancement versus what we consider more correct. So as you can see in the wrong example, it is too overcrowded, too many icons, icons at the wrong side. It adds much more complexity to the slide. Not every bullet point and every single element need icon. There is many different line styles and so on. On the correct example, we can see that it's a bit more simplified, clear. It's cleaner to read, but yet still nice and enhanced. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope it helped you to understand visual enhancement and how to use the tools that we offer at our platform and make the slides look nice and clear.